All right, we're here again. It's, I think we're up to episode 11 now, man. My brother will help me on that one. I get lost sometimes. Like, you know what? Let's That's start right. it off like this. Ooh. <laughs> so what I was going to say, it is the Rabbit Season Podcast, episode 11, man. My name's Rabbit. I'm the host. I got my brother, Shay Whitey, what here. Up, what up? Hosting and producing the show. Uh, brother Alex, man, is uh, taking the fleet guys, man. So it's dope. We got a whole team, Eclipse, and and even our bro Crazy Ray stopped by today. So crazy, yeah, crazy yeah. Ray. So, uh, we're having a, a hip hop combo again, like we like to do some cool combo, man. And who who better than to talk about some hip hop with than uh, my brother next to me, Class One, man. Thank you for coming through, dude. Uh, good looking for having me, man. Yeah, <laughs> we we uh like like you were saying, uh, before we started, is is you um. Uh, you probably weren't wouldn't have came if it was just like re- one of our regular shows the b side because you're not really uh at this point you're working on some stuff behind the scenes but you're not ready to promote it yet but when i told you no nah, we're just gonna talk some hip-hop you're like oh, all right I was, cool. I'm with yeah it. he's like all right i'm on my way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no but thank you for coming through man and just uh give people a quick background uh, of you um you know what crews you represent um, what you do in the scene and all that kind of stuff, man, for the people that might not know. Class one. Well, <clears throat> I'm part of the legendary liquid crew. I knew the liquid, man. Liquid. I had to. I, had yeah. to. I gotta rep the, 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 the fellas. The liquid is represented here. You know, I'm, I'm even rocking one of those Oh, sweaters. yeah. Hell, yeah. Well, see, you even get the exclusive shit. I got a couple alcoholic shirts, but not the sweater like that, man. That shit's tight. Yeah, that's why I had to get me a little beer. Yeah, yeah. You know, I can't, can't be rocking a lick, a, a lick sweater and drink wine. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, and then you, or you have the option. They move to the, the smokeaholic side too, right? Uh, they, the new products they're putting the, that's out. That's a new brand, <laughs> yeah. the smokeaholics. Yeah, so, you know, you could so, do either or. So, yeah, I'm part of that crew. I'm also part of Beat Swap Meet. Mm-hmm. I'm part of the, of the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Hell, yeah. And I'm also got this new click that we got going on is called the boombox nation okay it pretty much is a, is a club where where a bunch of uh, boomboxes back in the 80s yeah and that, but they're like uh, those are original pieces right yeah all oh, original like some no. of them need to be probably refurb sometimes when they don't work or something right or, or are they all like still working from the original day nah, we gotta fix them yeah no because i know people get paid to do that shit and yeah I, yeah and i i know a couple homies that do that but. and we like to think that uh we're the ones that kind of like brought it back to 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 the scenes. Well, and you know, no, no one no one was really rocking the boxes until we started coming out. You know, with the, with, and especially with social media, so it slowly start, started picking up. And you could see the essence of hip hop captured just in a quick picture you guys take. You know, with the boom boxes. Anybody that even might not know what a boom box is, some of the youngsters, whatever. When you see that picture, it encap- encapsulates right. hip hop. So, um, do you get people asking, you know, what's a boombox? Do you ever get the youngsters, you know, maybe wanting to know a little more? Because, cause bro, I remember cats used to ro- walk down the street holding one, and they'll be bumping the shit where you could hear it on the whole block, but they had it up to their ear like, bam. That, like, that shit ain't fake. Well, if you remember, it, it was a big part of, of hip-hop, oh, especially yeah. Hell in yeah. the 80s. I remember. You know, <laughs> no, no one was really rocking Walkmans or CD Walkmans, oh, yeah. especially cell phones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the only way you no know, to, to be jamming on the streets with the music is by rocking a boombox. Mm. Yeah, and cats used to be on, like, it could be, like, roller skates on their fucking, <laughs> on a beach cruiser or just strolling and they'll have the boom box with them and shit. Do you still have one of your original boom boxes that you had back in the 80s? Did you ever preserve one or, or did you just kind of have to search for Nah, I had to, to search. Oh, some, yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Some, do some really, and, really yeah, digging. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. W- but what made you do that? Is it because uh, there you didn't see them around anymore? You felt it needed the, re- especially over here on the West Coast? Nah, well, first I, 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 I got one, a small one. Okay. And then uh, um, I'm trying to remember which brand because I got o- over 20 of them. Damn. <laughs> you got the oh, that's, collection that, that, that's nothing because some, some of the members, they got over 100. In fact, uh, uh, DJ Ca- Cash Money, uh-huh. he told me that he has over 250-something. Damn. Hey, that's, that's vintage shit. I'm going to have to get me one again because I, I just want to show the kids, you know, and, and show them this is what they're missing. This is your uh, 
MP3 player. Maybe they can be dad. What do we plug in the USB? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm a, and, and then I gotta tell him, nah, you need these batteries that look like bricks. Yeah. So put in that motherfucker. How do twenty I, of them. How do I yeah, download the song? Twenty of them. <laughs> twenty of them. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. But it's just the essence of it, man. That was hip hop back in the day. That was real talk. You know, it's a trip that uh, now they're they're releasing new tapes. Uh huh. Like oh yeah, new cassettes. albums on cassettes. Oh, oh right. yeah, well, cause uh, you know we uh, artists are bringing back the uh, putting stuff on vinyl uh, yeah. too, but now they're even ta you know doing cassettes too, cause people people want that uh, you know that piece that they can hold and look at the artwork and you know that I don't think that ever went away. Like people got the MP3s, but I mean if you want to enjoy a whole album, you know you got to have that in your hand. Dog. Have you ever taken the time where you listen to music streaming wise right but then you listen to music through a tape or a vinyl or a cd and just chill back yeah. i don't know something different it's about different, listening to, yeah. to a physical copy. even like an lp like the crackle <clears throat> yeah, of the fucking vinyl dog reason. like <laughs> you know the shh that you can hear like all that just brings a sound and it brings me back well because even some youngsters that i know they like that shit dog and they and they go back and do research of some of these um og artists that they they would have otherwise not known about if they didn't hear it from somebody and then they go do their and that's the difference now the kids can easily research these artists i'm waiting for them that, to bring back eight track the, that's the next oh track. don't yeah. get me started with the eight track <laughs> yeah. oh you know who brought it back home uh uh click uh click the uh super latin because i've been rocking eight tracks i got an eight track boom box and i still buy eight tracks oh, okay oh, well because i seen him he got one and he repaired it and he was popping in the eight tracks yeah. and he and i was like damn i remember because back when i was a little ass kid but i still remember like my dad had like an old pickup truck and you pop open the glove compartment and there was an eight track in there you popped the fucking eight <laughs> track yeah, yeah my, my dad he had a 70 what was it, a 78 cougar uh-huh and I remember, and it had an eight-track player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and, and 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 if you remember, you you can rewind or, or fast forward. An oh eight track. yeah. Once oh, you yeah. skip a track, it you goes. Don't know what well, it goes on to the next whole segment of songs, yeah. right? Yeah. From what I remember, forever. Yeah. You can only play it one time ever. Once once you skip <laughs> it, it'll it'll jump to the next track. But it'll be like in the middle of the song or yeah. right in the end. Yeah, it wasn't like you could just uh, like, oh, you hear that lyric? You couldn't go back. You'd have to go back to the whole shit. <laughs> nah, man. but check this out. I got I got a homie. He goes by Ajax. He, he's uh, based in Australia. Uh huh. He's doing new eight tracks. Like he he made made one for NWA, Straight Outta Compton on eight track. Nas Illmatic on eight track. Wu Tang Thirty Six Chambers on eight track. Oh, oh shit. So it, he's it was... bringing out the class classics, but on eight track. That's fucking badass. You know, there's a whole there's a whole market for that. You know, people like that vintage shit. You know, just like some people have like in their playroom like a pool table and a, see, I'm gonna get there one day. But uh, and then they'll have like a jukebox. You know what I'm saying? And then they have the old school ones that had vinyl, but they also even the CD players. It's just something vintage about having that. Droids or something like an old school video game, yeah. Pac-Man or something. Man, it's just the analogs. You know, yeah. digital is cool, but analogs. Then the, if you're really into the sound, you could hear it. It's oh a yeah, huge difference. Oh oh yeah, and if it if it didn't have like exactly if it didn't have like maybe some of that stuff from being so old, like say a record or an eight track, if you got it when it was brand new and then you, uh, compare it to a digital oh, version yeah. of it, you people would be able to hear like th there's a difference. You, you know? know what's so dope right now is that we still got like record shops yeah yeah and yeah. and some are coming back like for for like fat beats they went out and they came back and then we got some new uh record shops opening up opening hey they up. opened one right here uh right here our neighbor yeah, shoppers should, lane right, right here yeah. Our, yeah it's called midnight hour i went in there once just to go introduce them as their right neighbor um they might still be when we're done here so right, hold up Can yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah do some right back. <laughs> this is where we take the break <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey uh like you know and then i i wanted to let people get, kind of get a background of what you've done but all these things um um have one thing in common and they they have like the essence of hip-hop involved even like some yeah. of the shows um but but i wanted to ask um uh where did it start for you um the love for hip-hop Cause for me, I think it it had something to do with my age. Like, it was when that was just what we did. Like, 
I did everything from break dancing, popping. Like I tried my little turn at graffiti, but I can't write for shit. And I, <laughs> I, I finally realized. No, don't it. feel bad. I'm yeah, no yeah. It, it was fun doing it. Like it was the thrill was cool, but it was like damn dog. And I looked sometimes and go that shit is ugly as fuck. I can't even write my name like with you know, like I should have been a doctor. That's how bad my my writing is. But um, but I've been kind of like through the essence of it. And I think that's where the love started. I, it might have been from the breakdancing time because we used to hear stuff when it first came out. And I, I was in contests. I would battle people. Um, well, well I, see, I could relate to what you're saying because, honestly, I think it goes for anybody, especially that grew up in the 80s. Uh-huh. We didn't – all right, you ever seen that question, uh, you know, uh, on, on Instagram or, or, or Facebook, you know um, – what, what song made you find love with hip hop? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. to be honest, I tell folks all, all the time, it's not what we heard, it's what we it's what we saw or it's what, what we, we felt. Cause, Cause that's how I felt family back in the day, dog. Like we, we I, I was at a young age, like able, cause I would go to my dad's a lot, and um, in Carson. Uh-huh. So my, my parents were divorced at a uh, at a young age for me, younger for my brother. And uh, but I would go there and and I was kind of one of them independent kids like um, I did what I kind of what I wanted. I would be out on the streets. We'd be break dancing. We'd be doing everything. And it was that sense of family, you know, um, camaraderie and the essence of just feeling the music and how it made you feel a little rebellious, but still had meaning behind it. And bro and that that's yeah so i could that's where i it was a feeling is what you what we and that's saying. why i'm still here do it like just like you we're still fucking with hip-hop man like you know what i'm saying you, were you break dancing too i tried to yeah but i but i sucked at it yeah me too i tried it <laughs> but yeah see i had my neighbors at that time they were b-boys and they were pop lockers yeah so they were see and then um if anybody could remember going back to the 80s and i'm gonna be talking about the 80s a lot um, it was it was a normal thing to 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 kick it outside, mm-hmm. you know, on, on the on, on the sidewalks. Yeah, just like you know? how how they show like uh, New York kicking it on the stoop or the yeah. porch. It's the same thing. That's what we did. So my neighbors, yeah. just like anybody else, yeah, they they will practice. They will have sessions on on the sidewalk, mm-hmm. you know, with the cardboard and and with the boombox. So because again, since they were across the street where I was at, all of a sudden, you know, I decided to start coming around and start started practicing with him and you could and it's just whether you were good at it or not it's just that feeling that you knew that was oh, hip-hop you knew that was hip-hop like you know what i'm saying right. and 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 look like i said we're all still doing something to so our, our small part you know See, I, I love it so much that I, i'm willing to do a, a bus of windmill right now yeah but most likely you guys gonna have to take me to the hospital yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we have that type of insurance in this building. Yet, but yeah. We'll have we'll have Eclipse walk on your back. Yeah. <laughs> now that might make it worse. <laughs> hey, uh, so so yeah, and then um, you know that's kind of what I was getting at, kind of with your like with the, what you post. You you embrace the uh, the elements is something that you you heavily embrace and. But you take it further, like instead of just posting a picture of you guys in the boom boxes, or or you at a at a show with a with a fucking legend MC or or a beatboxer or a DJ, like you take it further and explain not only that part of the uh, of the uh, uh, element marijuana. marijuana. See, there it goes memory. again, Shay. I'm fucking like, <laughs> but uh, no, but not only that part of the element. But you also explain who that person is in the picture. Like I've always appreciated because it like it's like say if someone's just casually following you just because you're a hip hop head or they met you somewhere, um, not only are they gonna see a, a a photo of you enjoying the essence of hip hop, but you give a little explanation behind it and that's dope. Cause well, cats don't know everything all the time, bro. Nah, like, especially the youngsters. Yeah. No, especially but even me, some of the stuff you post like there'll be a part of it and i'll go oh i remember that person but then you'll you'll go like back to originally from this crew or whatever and that part sometimes i'm oh shit i didn't know that you know a lot of it i do i'm not gonna lie but sometimes i'm like so you're educating even me and i'm i've been through this you and know also I mean? too um you know kind of correcting people who when they mistake people for certain people that are saying oh like some bad news or something might have happened like with shock g i remember you put something out 
uh, somebody who thought it was a different shot. Oh, the, 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 the homie Young Hub. <coughs> Yeah, they something. were posting up his picture. Yeah, with R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they were thinking that was uh, that's on that that's was on Shock G. G. But they don't, so you had to kind of let them know, you know, that was you know like actually uh, something that needs to be done, you know, <laughs> like that was dope. You know, you have to correct people yeah. sometimes when they got when they're misinformed, you know. Hey, but no, but that's why. Um, why why do you think it's important to sh- to showcase the elements? I mean, I have what? my. I mean, I know why it is, but what is what is your reason? What do you? What do you think? Because I mean, because I feel like it, it. If we don't, it it gets lost sometimes. Some it of, will. Some of the parts. It will get lost. Some people don't even know the DJ's the fucking backbone of the shit. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, and some of those things. Sometimes if we don't accent on it, they get they get lost in the sauce a little bit. The elements of hip hop. Well, we 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 have to remember the the origins mm-hmm. of, of if we're representing hip hop we got to know the origins especially if if, if we want to continue pursuing the original fundamentals of, of the culture yeah. and i feel that a, a lot of youngsters that they don't know their history don't are are kind of kind of like being misinformed what hip hop's supposed to be well and that's I, why their styles are all kind of kind of off and and you know what else they're they're shortchanging themselves because I feel if they knew a little bit more about the essence and the and the backbone and all that, they'll probably be a doper artist. Even at, you know what I'm saying? Oh, just yeah. just having that knowledge of the DJ and the graffiti and the b boys and the, you know everything, dog. You know the MC and uh, but you know what trips me out? You could you could talk to any uh, a 15 year old, a 20, a 25. If if they're a, a, a graph writer, they'll tell you. You know, they're OGs, you know, going back to the 70s and 80s. Talk to a B-boy, a pop locker, they'll tell you. Talk to a, 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 a DJ. So a lot of them will tell you. You talk to rappers and they won't be able to tell you, <laughs> give you some certain Hey, that's something. a fucking great point. That's a great point. You know, I noticed that, especially being involved with Beat Swap Me. I never thought I of it that, that way. That. I never thought of it. Well, Beat Swap Me will get you. Yeah, I, I never thought of it that way, but you're right. And you know what? And then... There's also a few like what I, what I do trip out on though is when we've had some not only just the artists that come in but maybe they came as a guest with somebody during our shows over these last almost 11 years and and um, the thing is there's a lot of youngsters that do have and usually it's from a family member or a big brother an yeah. uncle an uncle someone that used a parent. to oh <laughs> some parent too they used to bump that some Tupac in the right that so they're like yeah I know Tupac and them like, it's because their parents or, or somebody bumped it when they were a kid and they got, you know, kind of brought into the game that way. So I am impressed because sometimes some of these youngsters throw out some names. And I'm like, how do you know that? Like, and then some of them are underground. I'm like, no, hey. some of them do. Actually, yeah, a lot yeah, of them. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you know this? Per-? You know, oh, I, my uncle or my big brother used to bump that. So I, I really like this shit. So I bumped it. You know what I mean? And see, so, and that's one of the things uh, that I keep going, at the, how the way I use, uh, Instagram's platform because there's times where I, I you know I just want to you know what let me just deactivate yeah. this account you know but I actually get messages oh man good looking out I, I didn't know who was who were Uncle Jam's army yeah so that kind of keeps well, me going well you know what I'm t- yeah well see I'm telling you right here too you heard it on the podcast <laughs> but I'm telling you here too like uh, there sometimes we need to see those things even me as a as an older art or artist or you know whatever i contribute to the game like um a lot of these things i know part of it but i don't know some of you 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 fill yeah, me in for, for a lot of yeah you fill me in on some of the like part oh shit i didn't know that crew was involved you know or whatever but um but yeah i just wanted to i, I wanted to comment because you use that platform wisely and um for those that don't know you contribute to other platforms as well um, you know, on social media. So, uh, shout out to the homie class for that man, real hip hop right here. Um, you know what? Let, let me ask you because we were talking like you you just brought up MCs and like maybe that's one of the things that MCs don't do enough of is maybe knowledge get the, enough knowledge to know about who did it before them. Um, what what do you think? Um, is that one of the main things? But what do you? What else do you think? Maybe that artists can do a better job of right now. Man, well, see, here's the thing, though. It's two different uh, um, sceneries. Okay, okay wait. Oh, let, let me reword it then. Uh-huh. What do you think? 
OGs can do a better job of and what do you think the youngsters can do a better job of? Because I think if we both came to that middle ground, it would bridge the gap a lot now, more. It's the same thing. What okay. I'm about to say, it's two different scenes. Mm -hmm. You got you got uh, uh, rappers that are really into the culture and they know they know they're gang stars and they're they know they're they're mob deeps. Mm -hmm. But then you also got uh, uh, other rappers that are just into the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. And they don't really care about about the culture. Uh huh. All they want to do is just what well, they want to capitalize. Imitate. They, they want to imitate what what they're seeing at the moment and capitalize and off capitalize it. it. Yeah, yeah. And become the most popular and make the most money. Yeah, so the only thing we could do is just support the ones that are actually in it for, for the art. Yeah. And and so what do you, so what is is that your answer then for all around? You think youngsters and old maybe everybody needs to have their heart in it a little more is that kind Not of Not hard. We just we just need more more like what education. You, what, what you what you guys are doing like right here for example, you know, giving the proper shine to 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 those that are actually in it for mm -hmm. the right cause. Mhm. Mm right. Because we don't got too many platforms like that. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. And that's how we kind of started it in the in the first place is for that reason. It's just a, a place for promo when people are coming out with new stuff. But it acts, it, especially in the beginning years, it accented heavily on the underground. You know what I mean? So, uh, but, yeah, thank you for recognizing that. So, so um, how about in, in the scenario I said then, like, uh, like what can we do as older heads? To maybe help the youngsters off a little better in their career if we could offer them advice i would just say just we, we gotta keep telling everybody you know go back to the essence what where it all began well because you know some of the older heads like they kind of show them too we, we also gotta show them we just we just can't just just talk them. it yeah no but because like a lot of the older heads too like we have like a tendency to like Oh, we're talking shit about the oh, say for example, mumble rap, whatever we want to say, but we're not doing nothing to help. See, that's the thing. Though. We're just talking shit. We, we can't talk shit. That's what that's I mean. The, that's the last thing we want to do. Yeah. Push them. Pu push anybody away. Yeah. Thank you. Because when we start talking thank shit, thank you for saying that. Somebody, that's they're important. They're gonna be like, well, I'm not gonna listen to you. Yeah. 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 And well, it, and then, but for that, we have to relate more too on our end. I think as an older head, like we got to relate, and sometimes some of this. Uh, the newer music too. I some of it's so some of it's so dope, and these dudes are so creative. I think like kind of what you were saying is people kind of judge by the mainstream all the time, yeah. and whatever they might hear on. But there's so much more, and we and I know I'll, I'm speaking for me, class, and my brother Shay here. Like we encourage everybody to dig deeper for music um, than just what you hear on mainstream radio. There's a lot. A lot yeah. of music out there. Watch the B-side show. You'll yeah, find a lot of yeah, it. There it is right there. <laughs> or tune into the podcast, man. Yeah, we'll right. have somebody telling you what's up, man. And and, uh, and then youngsters, man, yeah, like you were saying, maybe just get the knowledge a little more. Don't just be in it for the, the cheese. The money will come, you know, if you do it right, I think. Um, so what? Um, let, me, let me ask you this then. who You mentioned certain songs or a, or a time, like we were saying, like when you go out to your front yard or whatever and people are practicing break dancing, whatever they might be doing. Um, who's, is there a certain person in, in hip hop or a couple artists or whatever? And you probably know them at this point, but that just inspire you. Like this shit is dope. They carry themselves the right way. They're why I like hip hop, like an artist like that, or not even just an artist, DJ, whatever. Somebody that I'm seeing or somebody that, that, that either influenced one. me. Either one. Yes, both. I, I would like to know. I mean, because it could be both. Because I'm saying some of the artists that inspired me, I know them now. <laughs> like, I could say they're my homie now. But back in the day, they inspired me too. So, um, But is there anybody, yeah, either that on the scene or that just inspired you in general? Oh, man. Well, I love what Namek is doing. Yeah. yeah. You know, um when it comes to rap, because see, I'm, I'm a DJ, mm -hmm. you know, so to me, it's, most, it's, it's more on the DJs, you know, uh, that, well, that who kind of speak on, you know, who, who, who inspires me or who do I appreciate. But yeah, What DJs then, what DJs do, could you remember, like, just growing up that you just, when you heard them, you were like, damn. That oh, it was all the mix masters from Tony G, Julio yeah. G, oh, hell Edward, yeah. Shout out Jam to Gemini, them. you know, Aladdin. Joe Cooley. Oh, yeah. You know, Bobcat. 
Hell yeah. Bobcat too. Yeah, man. Hey, dog. I um some of these cats too, man. Like I got to kick it before in uh uh Poo Studio. Okay. Years ago with Grim actually. And uh and and dude, some of these dudes would just stop by randomly. Like I seen a lot of cats on them and I'll be like, "Damn, I think Bobcat was there one time." But yeah, man, a lot of cats that like that it that inspired me that I knew about on the scene um, would random just like I mean oh I don't want to compare it completely but just like our platform here on the B side you've been here before you yeah. never know who stops by sometimes like they might not be one of the guests on the flyer for the show but we've had mad people just coming to kick it yeah, sometimes yeah. sometimes we don't even know like, yeah we, <laughs> <laughs> is that machete coming through the door yeah, we, like the, the, the time trail? Yeah, yeah when Frost came through yeah. one time and. He hits me up before the show and says, I got a, a, a surprise. I'm bringing with me a special guest. And I'm like, cool, man, whatever. Hit Frost, whatever, dude. You bring whoever you want to bring. And then we, we have the, the little uh, monitor back there. And we were back there. And it was a video or something in between takes. And and uh, we look on the camera and you could say, what the fuck? Is that Machete coming through the door? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he brought he brought Danny Trejo with him, man. It was it was crazy. But just just random shit like that happens here all the time. And I know, I know. Yeah, you've been. I, I was one of them. <laughs> you've been a random guest and you've tripped on the random guest, too. But, hey, uh, you remember the show we threw? Um, it was a dope one for me, but it, it was a cool show, the one we, we kind of helped contribute the one uh frost through remember uh, it was kind of like a throwback Woo! and we all we oh, all yeah. dressed in our like 80s hip-hop uh, early the 90s funk. there you go that that, was, that's what yeah. it was called right fresh for the fun yeah. Yeah. man dj Luman, you were one of the of djs yeah. uh Lou yeah man. i helped uh i helped frost organize it yeah and, and same oh. here and then i helped him host and then we we would we tried to get more p I, I, matter of fact i'm the one who uh i got Lou man over there and then frost at that point uh didn't know about Lou man but after his set, he was like, oh, Lou Man's hard, dog. Like, man, that was that night. Lou Man got it, down that night. I dude, like, that fool got nasty. Dog, I think, like, we had a lot of DJs that night, but I, I think Lou Man, yeah, he might have went away with that one, dog. He went, he threw, he was throwing on 45s in the middle of regular vinyl. Oh, and by the way, for those that don't know what we're talking about, like, this was all vinyl, too, by the way. It was all, all you know? vinyl, cause yeah. Cause we wanted to keep it all strictly '80s. Yeah, like like how it was, and the essence, like we were talking about. And and go ahead and talk about yeah. that, cause that was fun. Man, uh, yeah. After Luman said, cause I can't, was was I? Yeah, no, I went after Luman. Oh, that's a bad spot. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, cause I looked no, at no, Lou, I looked at Lou, I was like, no, all right, no. man, I got you. See, cause we were having so much fun. That we decided to, you know, do a little friendly competition against one another. Yeah, and yeah. then and then even so uh, that inspired you probably. And even uh, uh no, I lose one of my favorite DJs. No, even Scoop Deville came in. Oh yeah, Scoop, remember? Man, he Scoop did a set. came and he did uh, anything. The all the popular popular hip hop songs from the eighties. Yeah, he played the samples from the seventies. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that the original. So yeah, the yeah, original. That sample. was dope. Yeah. yeah, another part of hip hop. So, here's the thing. All right. So live, he played all the popular songs from from the eighties. Lumen just got nasty with with so big juggling and what up, homie? And cutting. Yeah. And I came in with the rare records that uh, either you never heard before, or you probably, the last time you heard that song was in nineteen eighty three. Yeah, yeah. So I came with that uh, uh, set, and and Scoop he came in with the samples. Yeah, yeah. So that hey, night, that and night was crazy. What's crazier to me is I know for a fact. That all that part wasn't pre-planned. Like no, you, you that, and I know that because I was part of that show. But see how it works out. Like real DJs and everybody involved wanted to make that the essence of the show. I'm telling you, after Lou Man, I gave him that. Like, okay, yeah. I see you. All right, let me so show I you. So I went now. freestyle on, yeah. on my set. Yeah. I was like, all right, I gotta step it up because this would just kind of yeah. kind of took it to the whole level. Yeah, yeah. He he. Well, he, and then yeah, and then people were. You know, at first people didn't know what to do because we threw it back. And we were even dressed like old school hip hop. Man, I don't, I don't know if you remember, but even you tried, you were freestyling. Oh, because you were you got so into it. I probably was. Yeah, yeah. you got so into it. Uh, I've heard that. It, it wasn't the exact words, but but I do remember you said something like, "Yeah, this is a MC rapping from the B side show." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, look at this guy!" 
Uh, yeah, you know, sometimes I go back to the essence. Hey, but the worst part is, yeah, if I try to throw a break dancing move, like you said, I might hurt myself. Yeah. You have to carry me out. <laughs> <laughs> at least I'm at least I'm light. People can carry me out not without too much hassle. Yeah, I like so. my big ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, besides that show though, like, can you? What's that show that pops in your head right now that you think of one of your favorites that, that you went that you attended or or that, that you were a or part that of? Or a part of because you were behind the scenes on a lot uh, of shit. Oh man, yeah, that people so don't many, know about. There's probably a lot, but just say, is there's one that you just damn like that was just the shit. Oh man, uh, it's gotta be either see because fresh for the funk that was more uh, like a club scene, club uh, uh, event. Uh, yeah, it was like in shows, like a yeah, uh, bar type spot. I have to go, man. There's so many. Is it okay? Is it either either the, our first antic show with with, 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 with the licks, King T, That's right. uh, uh, corrupt loonies, nice. uh, Kelly agents. Oh shit! Um, That's heavy right there. It was just uh, that was one. That was one of my favorites because when I when I when I arrived to the venue, uh-huh. I only saw one turntable. And I was like, I was bugging out, like, one table, what the <laughs> fuck? And if anybody knows me, you know, yeah, I rock Serato, but, you know, if, if I'm at home, if I'm in Cali, I'm going to be rocking vinyl. vinyl. Vinyl, yeah. So I'm like, damn, one third t- table, and I got, and here I am with, with, with records. So I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm going to have to move fast and, and just needle drop, drop records off the records. And um, Oven, the homie Oven, he jumped on the mic and he just, you know, started, you know, moving the crowd to to distract that one second of of the switching records. <laughs> I had to be super quick because again, it was only one one turntable. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I was pretty messed up. Like ah, you know, it was just it was the other one. <laughs> the other one uh, might have to be Radiotron. No, I've been to three Radiotrons that I help, I help um, organize. Mm-hmm. It's gotta be, I think the first one when I. The, fir- the first one I was involved, because we had over 50 acts. What year was that? That remember? was before COVID. No, yo, that is yeah. way, way, way before COVID. Is it COVID. like uh, the 2000s? Uh, or, no. Uh, the well, because we helped them with one that was we had to do during COVID. Like, the yeah, I seen that one. one. Yeah, and it, you know that we just he and he, he wanted to keep it going, so it was like a you know it would it it sucked because it's usually kind of more festival type yeah. a- atmosphere. Yeah, that one. Because yeah. I was part of a. Three or four of them. The one I'm talking about happened in 2015. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had a, a we had a, a mixture of, of b boys, pop lockers, which Red, which originally doesn't what Red Detroit is all about. Yeah, you know, street dancing. You know, but we had a, a from from first, second, third, and new generation of of MCs. Yeah. Not just MCs, but but from all other elements. Yeah. That's so. Cool. That, I had a, a good time, even though I worked my ass off. Because a lot yeah. of a lot of folks that that day quit, they walked out Damn. from 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 security backstage to at the radio tron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So so I took the initiative and yeah. stepped in and took the responsibility of, of we, everybody's job. We've been a part of a, a few events where like. You know, we'll had one agreement going in, and then all of a sudden, you were like, next thing we're around, do, we're, next, gone. we're no next thing we're doing all these things that you know that we weren't signed on for, and all this. But it's because, <laughs> too, man, the show has to go on, bro. And like, we want it to be right, you know. And you know, someone that's sometimes behind the scenes too. I know as a as a fan, they don't get to see all that goes on sometimes, but. No. As long as they go talking about that show, how see, d- how dope it was. No matter how hectic it was that that night, I had a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a good time. Well, and then if, it. but if you did, you imagine the people in the crowd. See, then that was the best part. That's it. Though. That was the best. You made memories for cats. Like, that was the uh, best part. Seeing everybody having a blast. Yeah, and that's my one of my favorite things about it too is you make a memory, because that's how I grew up on hip hop. It was certain things that I saw. A live event, an MC freestyling that just stuck out and just, dog, that's that's it for me. That's so dope. And right. and then, so when I could be part of presenting that to people, and then hearing them just talk about, it, they don't got to know about all the hectic shit. We know about it, but it, it's cool to let them know sometimes about what you know that we've been part of some of this stuff. But as long as the crowd feels it, it 
like dog it feels like dog we did oh, our, man. we did our job and and the best well, and one of the best feelings is that years has passed and they're still talking about it yeah yeah some of these shows are on that level like like you know standing out like when i i've been hosting stuff for a long time too as an artist and all that but you know one of the first ones where i knew like dude this shit is fun we hyped the crowd we we, we had fun with it but the first relevance show that that uh the homie crazy race put together me and him hosted that together and then we started seeing that we could work together and shit like that too but it was just that energy and the crowd felt it and then of course uh for me like uh hosting a couple man i got to host some psycho realm gigs and that that fucking energy's off the hook with their with their crowd and and then one of my favorites because i'm a a huge outcast fan but um i hosted big boy and sleepy brown oh really okay um at the observatory too and that was cool man because like the highlight i i introduced everybody hosted the whole show also helped you know it is stage management when i host shows i do that because I want people to be ready. I don't want no, be, I, I think in an action. Yeah, you know, I, I'll you, be running around and shit. Though. You even hosted a, a lick show. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was fun, too. The that anniversary okay. show, right? No. That wasn't it anniversary? That stands anniversary? out, too. Mm-hmm. The one with, uh, was it, uh, shit, with, uh, oh, it was, it, I think it was that one. At the 20, at the observatory, the 20th anniversary show? Yeah. Yeah, because you when, said, I remember when that. When all, the, the, all of them were there, E. Swift, yeah. Taj, uh, uh, J-Ro, they yeah. were all there. Yeah. They were all there. Yeah, and I think uh, actually King T was, was in there. the back yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, so that was one of them. And then uh, like on that Big Boy show, it was dope because I introduced everybody, but their DJ usually like I guess hypes the crowd or introduces them before they come on, so they like clear the whole stage. And I was like, "Damn, dog!" I go, and his manager happened to be his wife. And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> and uh, so I'm like, "Well, fuck it." Then I go, "I'll I'll I'll wait over here." Cause I go, I at least I get, a, I need to get at least a flick, and I'm not usually like that. Except that's my favorite group of probably of all time in, in hip hop, and uh, so I go, you know what? I hosted this. Let me get one. So I will wait out in the back because I was gonna go around to the front to watch. And luckily I did. They came back, bro, and one of and, and literally I think it was actually Sleepy Brown or his DJ. One of them came back and go, hey, wait, hold on. He he wants you to f- introduce because you had the crowd hype. Ah, ah, dog. Dog. That was one of the best cop. I was like, "Fuck yeah!" That that's a compliment, and I was like, "Hell yeah!" So let me do my job real quick. You know what I'm saying? But that was that was a hype time for me, dog. That was dope. Nice. Yeah. Hey. Um. So, you know, we were talking about all the fellows and everything. Um. Are you glad to see? I'm sure you are, cause I I know all of us are. Like, th- the ladies are going back to shows and shit again. I mean, I know we've been in the downtime covid but pre and it's getting back to it pre covid and and now that things are opening back up uh the ladies are going out to shows again cuz there was a little bit of a time where <laughs> it was the, a bunch of dudes yeah <laughs> was, <laughs> sausage look at a crazy race nodding his head there was <laughs> some sausage fest shows dog you know and to, for lack of better terminology but um but yeah it's getting back to it where um, the ladies love hip hop, but and not that they didn't, but at least they're going out to the shows again, and that that's a that's a beautiful thing, bro. Big time, big time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, so what do you think about where we are now, Doug? Now that things are opening back up, we're getting there, right? We'll get back to it. I love it. Yeah, I think so too. I feel like we're in the right spot, especially if the ladies are showing up to yeah to yeah. the showcases. Yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah, and it, and even the like how they're tied in too with the um, like the uh, cannabis sashes and different things, whatever it is, man. But the ladies are are coming out, and that's a that's a beautiful thing. But see, when it come, me personally, I want to see the, the the clubs. I'm, I mean, the, the the lounges, and I'm not I'm not talking about just like an, an average club. I'm talking about you know a, a lounge where where the where they bring DJs and and straight rocking a dope set. People they, they go to a spot for for, for the music. Mm-hmm. You know that's what I'm waiting for to, to for Cali to open up. So yeah, more of a lounge spot where where it goes back to some maybe some vintage stuff versus all that just because they have some of those and it's more catered to the. I know what you're saying and yeah. it's more because ca- the shows cool, but as a DJ, I, yeah. I enjoy listening to the DJs. You know. 
you know, rocking, you know, their, their set, what, what songs they're playing and how they're blending and mixing and, and, and the hey. cuts. Now I like seeing the reaction of the crowd. Well, I, I told you a little bit before we started this, but everybody that's listening to this, make sure you guys go get on your Twitch, go get a Twitch account and all that stuff. But we'll be, and I'm going to say relaunching because we've already done this we've been doing this almost 11 years and we've done this shit before too what we're about to relaunch and um i just don't want to give away too much because someone fucking next week or tomorrow will come out with it and and tell everybody they they're the originator of it but anyways we're, we're gonna bring something back but everybody just get on your twitch and we're gonna go that route for this one heavily and um, it'll still be available in a couple other ways, but we're going to heavily, uh, is that, that's what it is, right, Shay? Yeah, Twitch, uh, and just uh, every time, you know, all our platforms are in the link in, in our bio, like my page, his page, and the B-side page, so just hit that, because a lot of people, you know, they ask us a lot, you know, where do I find certain things, but everything's there, the contact and the, yeah, and the shop and all that stuff's there. Anybody listening to this right now that don't have one of us on there, uh, by the way, on my Instagram is... Uh, rabbit season one go ahead class what's yours it's, uh, class underscore one okay o, o and e okay yeah. we wait with the with the k instead of the c because a lot of people get confused okay with the name yeah so class one with a k k l a s s underscore one and shay shay whitey s-h-a-y-e whitey and, and then, then uh follow, follow the b-side and then b-side show on yeah. everything uh twitter all the platforms were uh also on our b-side live um we start the mix off on Instagram Live, and then we're live after that on uh, what uh, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Twitch Facebook, Facebook, all that shit. Yeah. Just giving you guys a quick recap of that. So, um, hey, we're gonna get it. Oh, Shay, you got anything for my brother? Oh, uh, so yeah, I know you're like a hardcore hip hop head, and that's your your passion. That's your you know your. But uh, what I mean is, there any other interest or something else you do when you're not like you know listening to music? Is there you know is like maybe movies, video games, books, anything like that, or certain hobbies or anything like that that else you're into? Man, well, I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm you could I'm say a, porn I'm, if you want. <laughs> <laughs> porn. Well, yeah, you guys could find me on uh, <laughs> Pornhub. You know, I, got, I have an account, Freaky Ticky Class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, message them so, on Pornhub if you can't find them anywhere else. No, <laughs> any go ahead, Reddy. <laughs> any hobbies, brother? Uh man, I, I'm I'm looking into into uh, writing a book. Oh, nice. But I, you know, it it, it goes back to to hip hop. Right. But see, yeah, I'm I'm into I'm into reading. I'm into I'm into movies actually, a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't mind doing an actual movie. In fact, I have uh, talked to certain people if 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 they were interested of, of doing at least. Um, uh, short films mm -hmm. just to just to start like documentary type or or like maybe like a drama or a comedy or no an actual short films of yeah of, of anything if, oh, okay because yeah. i've you know i've been showing interest of, of, of filming good to uh, hear that uh, yeah. because uh you know we're into that and uh, crazy races here alex is here uh -oh. oh yeah they, so, they so did a movie a nice little discussion That's right yeah. yeah crazy race this is a whole another the, topic right. now yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no but yeah these guys have uh experience and then i've i've done my little parts and some behind the scenes but i acted in a couple this just came up on the the last b-side but i was in the uh everybody i don't want people to look check it out now but it's called uh narco valley and mm. i i did a little part in there because it was filmed here and they the homie i'd known him he was the director and he goes hey dude i need you to do a little part and i was like fuck it because i've been in some of his videos before so i ended up doing that and uh but it was cool so anyways See, See, B-side films. Showed, it showed, I showed interest because, uh, well, I say uh, two years ago, I did a cameo for for the homie Egyptian Lover music video. Oh, okay. But that wasn't just a regular cameo. I went all in with 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 with, with a costume and they had makeup artists. You know, I, I went in there as like a ghetto alien from outer space. So just of you know, just dressing up yeah. the whole concept. Of I was gonna video. say, wait, did you did they make you just do that as a normal person? Like you're a ghetto alien, or <laughs> no, no. that's just my okay. crazy ass coming. coming yeah, like you just walked in no regular, <laughs> yeah, no makeup, nothing, you're just a crazy ghetto alien look named class. Hey, no, no, I just, I just saw the, the you know the the mask the mask they had the the gear, you know, and I just came out with the character. Oh, all right. So while while dressing up, and then then the the moment of, of filming. I just got I just got into it. 
Oh, that's what's up. You know, and, and then like, you, you know, knew. I, I, could, I could do something like this. Yeah, I could get into this. Well, that's how it felt for me, too. And then when I was telling them I got hit up randomly, like, by people for, that I went to school with back in the day or whatever. Hey, I didn't know you were a movie star, dog. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't know either. And then they're like, I saw you in this thing. And then I go, oh, shit, that, that movie's actually, like, on independent, like it was on like Amazon, different things. Yeah, he didn't know that he was nominated for an award. Like yeah, they had lost his <laughs> address and stuff. He was nominated for best actor. I forgot to <laughs> sign up with SAG, <laughs> and so yeah, I, I I was gonna win an Oscar, but they took me out, man. Hey, T- look, typical. Always yeah, typical. People. Always they 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 knew it. they found out where I lived, and they go, oh, never mind, fuck it. <laughs> well, here's the last one, and the homies on the Rabbit Season podcast again. And for that, I have to go. Oh, what a rush. Now, for anybody that is wondering what beer we're drinking, give this company a call. Time to send this paycheck. Yeah. yeah. And we'll twist the brand around. Yeah, and we'll turn it around and we'll make sure we all pose for pictures with it <laughs> showing in the fucking thing. <laughs> Except Crazy Race, he's still Marky Modelo. So I, I, <laughs> he gave the thumbs up. <laughs> Hey, um, this is what we call the rabbit fire round. We just uh, throw off some random questions, man. I'm sure my brother has a couple too, but you you do watch wrestling, or you used to uh, back in the day. Same with me. My brother still does, and we got something coming for that too, which we'll, we'll po- keep you guys posted on uh, uh, nice. shortly. Yeah. Um, but we, we've let a little bit about it out, but we're, we're, when it's official, you'll know. And what I was going to say is I st- kind of stopped watching back in the day, but and who's your favorite wrestler and uh, tag team from back in the day? You're talking I, 80s, right? Is it? I think that's yeah. the, the 80s, 80s is the theme. I was going to say that's the theme of the uh, show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 80s. This, te- this is an 80s show. I don't have a favorite, but... Man, uh, I used to love the the Heart Foundation. See, hey, they're one of my too, favorite. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, uh, they're one of they're actually probably my favorite uh, tag team. And then maybe like uh, remember like uh, Killer Bees or Kill- or, uh, Bees. or uh, oh, oh. the British Bulldogs. Remember? I take it back. Bulldog. I take it back. I'm gonna go wait 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 wait. Uh, uh, what was the name? Uh, uh, Powers of Pain. Wait wait oh, wait. Yeah. Barbarian and, and oh yeah, uh, the Warlord. Yeah, yeah, the Warlord and the Barbarian. Uh, see, huge. Pain, uh, I yeah, knew, Florida. I knew Shay would know that <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I knew. Eclipsio uh, would know too. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. violators, big in the monsters. <laughs> Eclipsio, the violator. He, he was a wrestler from the eighties, but he was, he was a jobber. But we'll talk about that later. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Hey, uh, hey, and uh, how, that, so uh, tag team. And how about you? Didn't have a favorite solo? Or what were a couple of them, maybe? Man, uh, Coco, beware. <laughs> and, uh, he was dope. <laughs> hey, you know who else? Junkyard Dog used to do his thing. Yeah. Junkyard was cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Junk, uh, I like the. Um, I like I like Piper. Yeah, Pi- I, I, like, Piper. I like um Piper uh, used to talk some shit, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Billy, uh, Billy, uh, Billy, uh, Billy Graham. Oh superstar? yeah, superstar Billy Graham. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 He was on. He was. He was. Oh okay, sick. Hercules. Woo, oh man. yeah, hell yeah. Hercules yeah, he was, was my dope. man back yeah, then. That's right. That's right. Go ahead, Shay. We won't give too much away. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I, just I, name a couple. Yeah, well, the top is it's always been, you know, I always give like Hulk Hogan because he's the one that got me into wrestling. Yeah, me too. Uh, and the was... Macho Man, um, Brett the Hitman, um, The Rock and Stone Cold out of the newer era, you know. Well, I think, the uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, Heart Foundation, like uh, Hitman, of course, the Heart, Brett, the yeah. Hearts were a wrestling family, but uh, he was able to transition from tag team and solo, solo. That, was, that was pretty dope yeah. uh, uh okay let's let's keep it moving uh, uh do you have a favorite uh dj uh of uh, i know you know your dj you got plenty of homies that are djs but do you have a favorite out of them or maybe a top couple i don't have one okay have name a, a co- go ahead name the few then you know uh uh new mark is one of them cut chemist uh, like i said all the all the mix masters k day mix masters yeah tony g what um, up uh flash you know kick capri mm-hmm. lou man uh the homie abel oh yeah, oh, you yeah know, mark he's love. an og too yeah what up mark love you know uh, we'll see him vicious, soon vicious, vicious lee in fact i posted uh my top was it 20 i'm on on my instagram a while back 
of digits that, that I enjoy. Oh, you know what? I mix, I missed that one. I'm going to have to go back and look at that one then because I, di I didn't see that Yeah, one. I gave a... All right. The good to know. Good to know. Favorite sports team? Oh, you got to rip my Cowboys, homie. Oh, shit. <laughs> Anybody else in here? No? Uh, no, no the, we, got, oh! we got all the thumbs down over there. Well, but let's make sure we edit that part. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> edit it. <laughs> no, they, they, they're not here. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's the sport uh, of all time. Um... Okay, is there, uh, if you could, maybe an artist that uh, is no longer with us that you, if you could bring back because you know he would still be contributing heavy? Sean P. Oh, we shit. We need him back to talk all nice, that shit. Nice yeah. answer. And he was, he was just hip-hop, bro, like that grimy fucking lyrical hip-hop, bro. Like, and there's so many uh, MCs that... that uh, Man, that don't have to be just an MC, come but anything. Back, you know, like yeah. Guru is one of oh, them. Oh, yeah. Prodigy yeah. from Mob Deep. These are all people that, you know, contributed also in multiple ways to the, the culture. Oh, man. So let's go. You got one, Tris? Oh, I mean, it's kind of an easy answer, but I, I would have been interesting to see what Tupac would have done with his career uh, if he uh, would have been alive today. Like, I'm, I'm sure he would have went into, like, acting and probably done some. Well. Because he was a good actor, too. So I'm sure he would have, like, kind of, like, took his career, like, you know, to from, another level, I, I would have thought, you know. See, I never met Pac, but me either. I, 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 I've been around him. Yeah. Because of my 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 homies from that time, they were on the street team for Death Row Records. Okay. So I've been around yeah. those guys. Yeah. And from my observation, what I could remember, Pac seemed like he was gonna be more on the behind the scenes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That he was gonna be hey, discovering talent. Well, because yeah. yeah, people didn't know that. Yeah, he not only discovering talent and bringing new artists, but like he contributed to a lot of things that like a, a lot of people they don't get. Maybe, but maybe that's purposely sometimes. Not everybody wants to be recognized for every single thing. Like, they just want to sit back and watch the people enjoy yeah. w what was created. And, you know? and that's what I got from him. Yeah. That, he was that, going to that direction. Nice observation. Uh, uh, any uh, rabbit fire? Oh, um, how about um, <laughs> going back to the movie? Like, out of these two genres, which what do you prefer, comedies or action movie? Oh man, it's gonna go fifty fifty. It just depends. Yeah, it kind of depends. You know, it could be comedy or the yeah. actions, but I'm gonna go with the co comedy. You probably yeah, watch more often. What about um, uh, Star Wars or Star Trek? Man, I'm not really got into neither one. Neither one. Oh, well, that's that's an answer too. That one, <laughs> yeah, that one's easy for me as a uh, Star Wars, but. Uh, there is Trekkies, man. There's a lot yeah. of Trekkies. Uh, you you go to some of the... Well, I don't know about the the whole conventions. I know I have a cousin that used to go to all those kind of crazy, like, comic con different things. and But now they have, what is it, Frankensons? Like, yeah, I'll almost, be going there soon It's this almost week. like the equivalent. Uh, it's like... A, well... Have you been there? Anything... Oh, that spot? Yeah. Frank yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Years ago. Yeah. Ages. Bro, these fools go all the time. They got collectible, all kinds of shit, right? I should go because I still buy... To this day, I still buy... VHS movies. Oh yeah, and, and, and laser discs. Yeah, they have. Oh, all you that too. you have your V. Oh, I, yeah, I still I have, have mine too. Yeah, I got the, the, the one where, where it pops on the top. It opens on oh, top oh, of the yeah, oh, That's old school. I yeah. had one yeah, of the. VHS, I boom. still have one of the newer ones, and it still works. But the one that had the DVD and the VCR, but it's not the one that pops yeah, out. That, no, that's I'm, the I'm, old school. Yeah, it's about old school. 1985. 80s. That's 80s. like the fucking betas. Hey, did you refurbish that? Like your um, like your boombox, or it's just still working. No, because no, the belts, what happens is the main thing. They, they run out. The belts fucking, they get dried yeah. out and they break. And, and you that, start hearing. Well, it, that not only makes the, th the thing play, but it also, the one he's talking about, it, it actually, the belt pushes the thing up and oh, down. That's right, to right. Eject. Yeah. It's a gear and then the belt spins it on the motor. Yeah, because <laughs> for the most part, all the VCRs are, are in, uh, on the side and the front. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Oh, this one's on top. Yeah. Hey, and the reason I know that because like, hey, dude, like that. like the whole, like <laughs> Well, that and the homie like click. Um, like I'm a technician though. I fix shit. I, I take, the, since I was a kid, I take things apart and I fix them. So I know, oh, shit, I know how to, to give you a call pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. I, I could fix a lot of shit. I just don't put it out there too much, but yeah. And then one more Marvel or DC as far as the franchises go, like the oh, whether man. Co comics or movies, whatever, like which one do you think has the better characters, the better movies, the better. Well, Batman's my dude. Yeah, so you that, got that, DC. That's then. my homeboy, right? Okay. <laughs> DC. <laughs> DC right. That's right. the homie. Right. Uh, okay, and uh, you have a favorite dessert? Because I have, uh, I still eat sweets, even though I don't eat as much candy anymore as I used to. But I like all desserts usually. Uh, cheesecake. 
Cheesecake. That's it. That's like my my stepson. I like cake more, but my stepson, what he prefers cheesecake. So, yeah. All right, man. Uh, well, any anything that uh that gives it the munchies after you know, after you smoke a couple oh. of nice little. This is such good hey, and, shit. And 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 uh, let me ask you this. Uh, okay, we we've asked that this one's a commonly asked question, but uh, liquid swords or uh, Cuban links. Oh man. This one we have oh, like man, a 50 50 cool. everybody that we see me we've are, I'll give you my answers though but I think my brother too but I, I it was hard but I go lean more towards liquid swords a little I'm bit I'm going to go with that just because the production you can play it has more of a joints to to, to rock a party Okay well where you could play more of them like more of the whole thing more of the whole catalog at a party just because of the beats Yeah yeah the selection yeah and dog, uh, both of them, man. The lyrical content and everything was crazy. Oh, yeah. Hey, this has been a hip hop convo, man, and that's what uh, we're building here at the on the Rabbit Season podcast. You see the lounge area. We're just chilling, man. We we're gonna have some some more homies and people you guys might know stopping through. But it's about the combo and it's the cool combo that we have here that that we're um, embracing and and that's why we wanted to have you through so we could just talk some hip hop. And that was dope because it was like like Shay said the. The theme was kind of the 80s, you know what I mean? So, oh, yeah. Hey, uh, any uh, shout outs or let them know again where they can get at you too before we end this joint. Well, let me give you a, a, a huge shout out to, to my people over at your, at the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Okay. Because they just had a ceremony to for the groundbreaking, which was two days ago. And we had our Cool J, nice, Chuck God. D from Public Enemy, oh. Fat Joe, uh, EPMD, Grandmaster Flash. Uh, man, so so many uh, he, so many hip hop legends. So the museum is is, is about to start under construction. I, I remember when you guys were were when you were telling me about it when it was first getting yeah kind of years ago getting stuff together yeah getting like the little archives and things together. And that's what I'm, I'm in charge of. I'm, I'm in charge okay. of the archives. Okay. So I'm sorry about to start getting busy, start working. Hopefully, all the our West Coast pioneers they still got some of their original. You know, uh, stuff to contribute. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. I mean, because if anybody knows, like, what they contributed on the West Coast, especially, it's my man, Class One, right here. This guy. And see, real quick, and, and that's one of my biggest uh, 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 mission, in, especially when it comes to, to, to hip hop. I feel that, especially us being from the West Coast, we don't embrace, we don't fully acknowledge our pioneers. You know, no, no disrespect, cause I still, I got mad love for 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 the pioneers of, of, of where where it all began in New York, mm -hmm. from the Cold Crush yeah. to 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 the Bronx Boys, you know. But us being from 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 the West Coast, you know, we we gotta embrace our pioneers, mm -hmm. the Uncle Jam's Army, mm -hmm. the World Class Wrecking, wrecking Crew, uh, the Disco, Disco Daddy, Daddy, I was gonna the, say, the, the yeah. Ice Tees, you yeah. know, yeah. the venues like like, like uh, Radio Tron and Club Radio mm -hmm. and the Disco Shop, and, and oh man, I could go on and on, you know, the LA Breakers, the Sh uh, Shake City Rockers, mm -hmm. you know, the RTD, RTDK crew, the MTA crew, mm -hmm. oh man, the those uh, uh, D, uh, DJ Aladdin, uh, the, uh Mix Master, uh, Aladdin. yeah, yeah, uh, uh, dog, some of the people the, you the named Cali earlier, crew. yeah, and uh, you know, some of them even transferred, but they still claim you know, West Coast because they've been here longer and different things like that. But everybody that contributes to the culture, I'd like to thank you, and, and it's fun now. to, 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 um, to, I'm gonna give you a, a prime example when I say it's fun to know about some of these pioneers. You know, take Dub C for example. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know that that his first record he beatbox. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't rap. Yeah. And he used to go to Radiotron to beatbox. Mm -hmm. So you know, so. And then even as far as they don't even know about the Mad Circle and shit. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the low profile. Uh, yeah. Uh, when he and he was with uh, with with Coolio and. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, coming out with him back in the day, and then Dub C did it. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm sorry, Coolio was part of the Mad Circle originally, and and uh, it's crazy how far he goes back. Like he's a it's real. Uh, OG and that's what I'm saying. We have a lot of history, yeah. and that's what I'm focused on to re hey. reintroduce one our of, origins. One of my f uh, that's like something that stands out too, though. Rest in peace, Crazy Tunes. Uh, uh crazy. we I got to host a show with Dub C and uh, Devin the dude, and uh, before Dub C had got there, we were just chilling in the green room, 
um, you know, in between, I was introducing the artist, and I went back there to smoke real quick, and then, dog, I, we we got to literally we were chilling with fucking crazy tunes. He's that's he a was homie. like homie, dog. That's like a homie right there, crazy. we blazed, dog. We took flicks, dog. We were having a good time. It was funny because then Dub C rolls up, he looks in the green room like. The fuck he's looking at his brother like what the fuck's going on in here he was already partying with all the homies that were part of the show and it was cool man was, rest in peace to crazy tunes man hey uh any uh, I, and i'm glad you acknowledge that but um we need to get back to that um acknowledging the west coast vets and ogs and pi- excuse me pioneers uh that that put on for us over here to make it further so uh any other shout outs my brother you know oh my my family members over at B, uh, at the B, uh, oh I was gonna say at the B side shop. Yeah, well that too. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> hey, we'll take it. We'll take yeah, it. Yeah, we'll take that shout out. Yeah. You know, B swap me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and and for is that is that gonna be the next one coming back soon too for B swap me? I forgot to mention that earlier. I don't know yet. I, still, okay. I gotta touch bases with utmost. Yeah. What up utmost? Yeah. I haven't talked to the homie in a grip, but yeah. But there's a lot of folks that they they been hitting me up. Okay. About, are we coming back? So stay tuned. So stay tuned. Stay tuned for that info, man. We're going to give it to you all the way raw like we always do, man. I want to thank my brother, Class One. Did we forget anybody before we go, man? Just everybody yeah, overall. Yeah. And all, the, all the hip-hop community, everybody that that uh, went through these crazy times. Yeah, and staying positive, man. And, you know, we'll bring it back. We'll get back to the shows and all that shit. We're going to keep it live like that. Funky, every single... Uh, week make sure you guys check out the b-side show as well and then the rabbit season podcast just some cool combo with some some people not only hip-hop heads man we're gonna have everything actors uh athletes everything. porn stars so, yeah porn that's stars yeah. Yeah. yeah that's coming up soon yeah well yeah <laughs> ladies though ladies not to do. yeah, yeah let's make that clear yeah <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can have a, we can, you can have some full call Yo, yo, rabbit is big boner. You yeah, know, I want to yeah. see what come to your show. <laughs> the homie Moby. Richard. Yeah, ri- <laughs> Richard. <laughs> hey, something's right. You got one more, Jay. Your mic's oh, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just real quick, I just wanted to uh, say thanks to everybody that tuned into the last, all the comments and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, um, if you can, just, you know, we appreciate that, the feedback. Uh, just let us know what we're doing, you know, that we, what you appreciate about the show, what, what part you were feeling, what you weren't, and just, you know, just thanks for, for tuning in with us. Yeah, and we'll keep it moving. We'll keep it going forward, man. Thank you, my brother, DJ Class One. Well, I say DJ because I've seen you DJ plenty, but Class One on his Instagram and all that, but with some hip-hop combo right here on the Rabbit Season Podcast. Thanks to all the homies chilling with us, too, man. We'll see you next week. Peace.